Honestly, I'm to the point with this car that I don't know how people can keep ignoring this engine. If we make a comparison between this car and my dad's Sunbird, the Sunbird having a 5.3 liter LS and an S480 turbo, both on the same dyno at 19 pounds of boost. This engine makes a hundred more horsepower than the 5.3 liter. So the 4.2 liter is kicking the crap out of the 5.3 liter with 71 less cubic inches. And this engine has way less camshaft. Was GM secretly developing the Atlas series engine to be their flagship product? Instead of the LS, the world may never know. Alright guys, today is Dino Day round two for this project. To start off, I want to give you guys a brief overview of what you're looking at. This is my dad's 1974 Datsun 260Z, and we have swapped in an Amerabera, also known as the Vortec 4200. It came in the Trailblazer chassis, the GMT 360 I believe is the chassis. Uh, it's a inline six cylinder that GM produced from 2002 to 2009. And a large part of this channel has been proving out the merits of this engine. Everything up until this point has been a stock bottom end, but this is the first time that we have installed forged parts into the bottom end. Now, we didn't go too crazy. The only mods done to this engine are forged connecting rods from Molnar, some head studs that are designed for a Gen 3 LS from Speedmaster, some Crower valve springs, some Schneider reground cams. My dad did some porting on the cylinder head. He saw lots of low hanging fruit. And we've gapped the stock piston rings to around 30 thousandths, both on the top and bottom. Everything else is stock. That means stock crankshaft, stock pistons, reuse the stock rings, reuse the stock bearings, I'm a little apprehensive about getting this onto the dyno. Um, the last time that it was on the dyno, we ran a completely stock engine and we had some pretty uh, annoying issues and ended up breaking the tabs off of the torque converter. That being said, it is a totally fresh transmission with a totally fresh torque converter with a totally fresh engine, so we shouldn't have any problems. But we're just going to have to find out, so let's get onto the dyno. Finally, we're making smooth pulls. It was a touch lean up top, so for the next pull, I richened it up a little bit. If you guys didn't catch it, there were a few sparks that came from the bell housing area underneath the car just before I let off. This has actually happened to us before on my station wagon. Basically the flex plate flexes forward just a little bit and it causes the flex plate to come into contact with the starter. So for the next pull we pulled the starter and ground the corner of the sprocket off a tiny bit. Also, did you guys see those flames? That was pretty crazy. Methanol life, I guess. The next couple of pulls, we dialed in the VVT and we found that our original position was the best we were going to get. So I'm gonna skip those and we're gonna move right on to when we turned up the boost.
that ported head is putting in work. At this point in the day, we had met our power goals. This was the power level that we wanted to run the thing down the track, as this should get us into the fours in the eighth mile. That being said, we did kind of want to try and break our record for the most amount of horsepower that we've made with one of these engines. Therefore, we went for a little bit of a bonsai run. That's not what we wanted. During that pool, it went pretty fat. It was like below 4 to 1 AFR, which if you are a methanol guy, you know that's runnable, but a little on the rich side. We really didn't want to put too much stress on this motor, as we really wanted to save this thing for the no-name nationals in September. So we decided, let's try to break our record one more time and if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. Either way, it's going to be our last pull. To try and ensure we'd break our record, we gave it a little bit more duty on the boost controller, and we also adjusted the VVT slightly, along with leaning it out a touch. guys we had an awesome day the car made nice smooth power from the very beginning and we got to play around with the vvt quite a bit i want to say a huge thanks to my brother who helped out with all of the uh, data collection for the vvt and he, and he actually developed a equation that he was able to use in order to more quickly dial in what the optimal vvt position for the exhaust cam at the given operating condition without having to make a million poles. So as you guys saw at the start of this video, we were already close to making 600 horsepower and that was only on 11 pounds of boost. That's extremely impressive. Honestly, I'm to the point with this car that I don't know how people can keep ignoring this engine. If we make a comparison between this car and my dad's Sunbird, the Sunbird having a 5.3 liter LS and an S480 turbo, both on the same dyno at 19 pounds of boost, this engine makes a hundred more horsepower than the 5.3 liter. So the 4.2 liter is kicking the crap out of the 5.3 liter with 71 less cubic inches. And this engine has way less camshaft. Now some of you might say, well, why don't you port the head on the 5.3 liter then? The smaller engine made a hundred more horsepower. Why don't you run more methanol through the 5.3 liter? It's 71 cubic inches smaller. Oh, an S480 turbo with a 96 millimeter turbine. That's too small for a 5.3. This thing has smaller cams both in lift and duration. Oh, well, I, I just think you didn't tune the 5.3 liter right. Whatever, dude, I can't win. I, I, I whatever, but seriously. I think this engine is extremely impressive. So I'm calling out Holly. I'm calling out Moroso. I'm calling out Motion Raceworks, Milodon, Melling, Plasma Man, ICT Billet, Champ Pans, Summit Racing, Jegs. Come on guys, let's get something to happen here. Let's get some parts made for this thing so that other people can enjoy them before they all get crushed and destroyed. There's money to be made here guys. And if you're watching this video and you don't have any association with those companies, please help me share this video. 
Let's spread this thing like wildfire. Let's make it so they can't ignore it. I really think we have something here, guys, and I need your help. Last but not least in this video, I want to say a big thanks to everybody that helped make this build possible. First off, I want to say a huge thanks to Monkey Fab Garage. He provided the merge pipe, which you see right in the front of the car, and he provided all of the fittings that you see on the car. If you guys are into budget hot rodding parts, like the ones I just mentioned, you need to go to Monkey Fab Garage and pick up some parts. Next, I wanna say a big thanks to Snake Eater Performance for providing all the injectors in the car. If you guys aren't familiar with Snake Eater, they provide the best bang for your buck injector solutions for just about anything you could need. Next, I wanna say a big thanks to Black Sheep Industries. They provided the blow-off valve for the car. Next, I wanna say thanks to Firepower Race Coils for providing the IGN-1A coils that we made 867 horsepower with. And for anybody that has any doubts on if they perform, we actually ran a pool just before the peak horsepower pool, and the AFR was 3.8 and the coils lit it off just fine. Last but not least, I wanna say a big thanks to PC Machine Works for helping us out with machining the oil pan. Super happy with how it came out. You guys are awesome. Next, I have a whole lot of people that I need to thank. First, I gotta say thanks to John and Jonathan Rose and also Scott Fry for the help wrenching on this car. Next, I need to say thanks to Mark at the Buck Does It YouTube channel for the help that he provided when we were wrenching on the brakes. And last and certainly not least, I wanna say a huge thanks to my brother, my mom, and my dad. They helped immensely throughout the build. This car was originally put together as a family build and most certainly could not have done it without them. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably saying, you should have gone for a thousand wheel horsepower. Well, we're definitely going to do that in the future, assuming nothing goes wrong at the track. But as it is for now, if you back calculate 867 horsepower, that is over a thousand horsepower at the crank. And we were happy with that for now. We need this thing to be functional for the No Name Nationals. And after today, we know we have enough horsepower to really put on a show. So make sure you guys check out that event if you want to see this thing run in person. With that, I'm going to end the video off here. I want to thank everybody for watching. Like I said, guys, let's spread this video far and wide. The aftermarket can't ignore this thing any longer. And also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And maybe hit the join button down below. And consider becoming a channel member. All my Nivlac 57 shirts are dirty. But if you guys want to support the channel in another way, you can also go to the link in the description and buy some shirts. With that, we'll see you in the next one, guys.